Today is post op day 10, and last night was hell. It was, it was pure hell for me. So my typical nights include taking some pain medication, taking any um, other prescribed medications like my antibiotics, um, trying to find a comfortable position in that damn bed, and then going to sleep. It's normal for me to have to pee throughout the night because I'm drinking all this water, and my bladder is some crap anyway. Um, but I woke up around two o'clock this morning to use the bathroom. So when I finally got back into the bed and got into a comfortable position, I started feeling that damn tingling and stinging around my waist. And then a couple of hours later, I felt what we call zingers. Zingers are sharp, like a sharp shooting out of nowhere pain because your nerves have been shocked pretty much with the liposuction and they're trying to get themselves back together and your skin is also trying to adhere back to your, um, your tissues and your muscles. So once that finally subsided, then my damn drain started to burn like, sh like, like no other. Like it, I've had the burning, but this right here, I could not go to sleep for nothing. I said, F this, this Faha is coming off. I undid everything. I took out my foams and my boards. I took some Tylenol, 1,000 milligrams, and I laid there in pain until it finally subsided, and then I fell back asleep. The nurses came in to give me my antibiotic in the morning, and they was like, uh, what the heck? Why is your fall open? I wanted to say, bitch, if you knew what I was feeling last night, then you wouldn't be asking me that dumb question. My stomach was all swollen and everything, but I could care less. You hear me? I could care freaking less at that point. So yesterday, if you all have been watching, you know that I went to get my Faha taken in the waist uh, because it was on the last row of hooks. So instead of it being on this row, it was on this row yesterday. So they cinched in my waist so that I can utilize these three rows. So this is what I look like at day 10 post-op. I do have on my backboard, I don't have any foams on my sides, um, just in my front and my ab board. After my massage today, once she gets all of that um, fluid out, I'm going to have her put everything back in, including the foam on my sides for extra compression. I'm also going to get my nails and my feet done. It's cheaper here, so yeah, let me get it done here. I also have my final post-op appointment with my doctor at one o'clock today. My last day. Alright, here we go again with this crowdedness. Uh, blood work. Understand that um, we're coming to get plastic surgery, but I don't need to see all these naked body parts in here. Make sure I don't have any blood clot in my lung, my legs. Be like me, wear your compression socks all the way up. If you don't, it'll be like a tourniquet and it'll cause you to have um, blood clots in your legs. No blood clots? No. Okay. No blood clots. Okay. Fine. <laughs> Next up is the customer service survey. Here's my doctor. Hi, Barbie. She's amazing. Come see her. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. All right, Bye. and this is Vanessa, her physician assistant. She's great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I know y'all about tired of seeing me complain, but they said that my white blood cell count is elevated, so they need to give me 
IV antibiotics for $44. However, on a good note, my hemoglobin is 11. The normal range is 12 to 16, but mine dropped all the way down to 6.1, so I'm almost there. So this is Carla. Carla, right? Carla. Yes. She did all of my dressing changes. Um, she educated me. She's awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. So the plan was to go home and recover some more while the kids are in school. Well, school is now freaking closed for two weeks. So I made it to the airport. Just so you know, when you pull up, there are going to be people outside and they're going to take you from there to here and they are going to say tip. There is nobody in here. It's completely empty. I don't have time for the coronavirus. I got me my gloves on and some wipes to wipe down my seat when I get on the plane. And there it is. So when you go to the airport, you can't wear your phones and boards. And this is what happens. That. It hurts so bad. Oh, it's like digging in my skin. Don't wear your phones and your boards because you're going to get stopped at security. Well, I got stopped at security anyway because of my damn drain. So they had to take me into a private room to make sure I wasn't smuggling with shit. Really. Y'all see this, this, this damn bobby pillow? Y'all know what happened. So I could have worn my damn phones and boards. And my father would not be digging into my skin right now. So apparently when you step into the little scanner thing, it can tell if you have any lumps and bumps, which was my drain. So this is what I'm dealing with right now. Oh. And it won't straighten. It hurts so bad. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 Bye bye. See you later. See you later. No. Get out the bathroom. Bye. Bye. That means you leave. It's cold out here. Bye. What's up, beautiful people? First of all, Finley, Finley, where you at? Where are you doing down there? <laughs> So when you come home, you're probably going to have to continue to give yourself the heparin shots yourself. Um, I think I had to do it for about two or three days after I got back home. And again, these are to prevent blood clots. So when I got back in the States from DR, I was ready to eat some real food. 
So my husband was like, you want something from Hook and Reel? I said, yes. Hook and Reel, they basically have the bags. They have the shrimp, the crabs, the, the crab legs, the potatoes, and um, the corn and the sausage in the, the bags. And so I smashed it, and then I was like, uh-oh. I'm swelling like a damn balloon. From all of the salt, I could just feel my whole abdomen getting tight. And my faha and my boars were just squeezing me. Ugh. Don't be like me. Eat low-sodium food like you're supposed to. When you get back, or you're going to swell.